We want you to be in a merry mood for the Yuletide season, but we also want you to be mindful of your spending around this holiday period. After all, you don't want to be in a bind by 2016, do you? Don't break your budget to catch a Christmas sale. 10% off a $3,000 item is only $300, and we haven't even factored in the 16.5% for GCT. If the money is not in hand, try to limit your card use and ensure that you don't bank on money that's expected to come in because it just might be delayed. And try as much as possible not to burden your family and friends by asking for a loan you know you're unable to repay in a short period of time, if at all. Think on these things. Hello and welcome to another edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Theodore Henry. We have a lot in store for you, so please stay with us. Is your silence worth the life of a child? Report child abuse. Call the Office of the Children's Registry at 1-888-PROTECT. Be the change. Speak out. Protect our children. Good day, I'm Tamar McHale and this is your GIS News for Monday, December 7. $64 billion has been pumped into the tourism sector since 2012. Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller gave the confirmation on Wednesday as she opened the latest tourism investment in Ocho Reyes. Right now, some 2,500 hotel rooms are under construction or to be opened soon. In addition to this, construction will commence soon on another 8,000 new rooms. As Jamaicans, we are proud to be commanding the confidence of major players in the global hospitality arena. Mrs. Simpson Miller also committed her government to continue to market Jamaica globally through the Jamaica Tourist Board. Mexican firm Palace Resorts invested $200,000 US dollars to refurbish and rebrand the former Sunset Jamaica Grand Hotel into the five-star 730-room Moon Palace Jamaica Grand. Palace Resorts has since committed to investing another $300,000 US dollars into the island's tourism sector. As she welcomed the new tourism property, Mrs. Simpson Miller thanked Palace Resorts for employing 600 former staff of the Sunset Jamaica Grand Hotel. Meanwhile, the hotel room stock in the corporate area has increased with the opening of Courtyard by Marriott Hotel in New Kingston. The 129-room hotel opened last week with an investment of more than 25 million US dollars. Tourism Minister Dr. Wicker McNeil says it's a welcomed addition to the number of rooms available to persons visiting Kingston. The hotel is the third to be built in the English-speaking Caribbean under the Marriott brand. It boasts more than 1,900 square feet of meeting room space. Approximately 98% of the hotel's rooms have already been booked. A survey into how Jamaica's children use social media and the internet has been completed for the county of Surrey. Children's advocate Diane Gordon Harrison made the disclosure at a youth and a children community meeting in Old Harbor last Thursday. We're now going through Middlesex and Cornwall where we're seeking to gather information so that we can issue tips to students and parents and also to expose to all how it is social media ought to be used responsibly because it is here to stay. Thursday's community meeting was the second in a series being staged by the Office of the Prime Minister and the Ministries of Education, Justice and Youth and Culture. The aim is to give children and youth an opportunity to voice their concerns and to get answers on issues pertinent to them. 
while committing her government to safeguarding the interests of the nation's children, Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller encouraged parents to take care of their children. Remember to listen to them, talk with them, never at them. Talk to them, never at them. Protect your children, respect them. Yes, respect them. Teach them positive values and healthy attitudes. Remember to set the right examples because children live what they learn. Another phase of the $202 million Mason River Water Supply Improvement Project started with Friday's signing of a $69.8 million water pipeline contract. The work to be done will consist of the construction of four kilometers of 200 millimeter PVC pipeline, nine kilometers of 100 millimeter pipeline and two kilometers of 50 millimeter PVC pipeline within the Mason River and Shooters area. The project is expected to benefit hundreds of residents in Mason River and adjoining communities in Clarendon. Other works that have been done under the Mason River project include intake work and the installation of tanks and pump stations, all of which are already complete or significantly advanced. And finally, the York Castle High School in Brownstone St. Anne officially launched its sixth form program recently. It means students on the North Coast now have more local opportunities to further their studies after matriculating from fifth form. Education Minister Reverend Ronald Thwaites pledged his ministry's support for the program as well as for the construction of a new block to accommodate more sixth formers. It is a sign of a school that is growing up, of mature achievement and good purpose. I am pledging that the Ministry of Education will help you with your sixth form block. A total of 142 students are in the program, with 91 students in lower six and 51 in upper sixth form. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McHale. Thank you for watching. When using an automated banking machine, ABM, ensure the machine is in a location you are comfortable with. And when you enter, be sure to close the door. Examine the machine before you insert your debit card and never enter your card if the machine has a suspicious device attached to it. More important, don't allow strangers to assist you in conducting a transaction. And remember, treat your debit card like cash. Keep it in a safe place. Children, women, tourism and security were some of the areas Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller and her team at Jamaica House focused on this past week. Catch the highlights next. District constables eligible for pension starting April 1. Prime Minister welcomes five-star hotel in Ocho Rios and... Do not take out your personal frustration on your children. Come April 1, 2016, district constables will become pensionable. Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller gave the assurance last Wednesday as she addressed the 24th Annual General Conference of the United District Constables Association. She said Cabinet had recently given its approval. Instructions have been given to the Chief Parliamentary Council to start work on amending the legislation to give effect to this decision. Mrs. Simpson Miller added that district constables were also to benefit from the government's pensioners only administration health insurance scheme and performance increments. The Prime Minister used the conference to thank the over 2,400 district constables for their help in creating safer communities across the island. We acknowledge with gratitude the sacrifices you have made and continue to make on behalf of the people of Jamaica. Welcome to Jamaica, which is rated by the World Bank and Forbes magazine as the best place in the Caribbean in which to do business. That welcome was extended to Palace Resorts as it opened Moon Palace Jamaica Grand, a five-star all-inclusive hotel in Ocho Rios. The former Sunset Jamaica Grand property was remodeled at a cost of 200,000 US dollars and now offers 730 new rooms to visitors. By your investment in this state-of-the-art resort, you are demonstrating your confidence that Jamaica 
will continue to be one of the premier destinations both in the Caribbean region and globally. Mrs. Simpson Miller also commended the hotel for employing 600 former staff of Sunset Jamaica Grand. Our goal is to facilitate win-win investments that bring investors a good rate of return and also create good jobs for our people. My government considers the issues affecting children and youth to be very important. And so Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller traveled to the New Testament Church in Old Harbor St. Catherine Thursday for the second in a series of community meetings on children and youth. She was joined by stakeholders from the Ministries of Youth and Culture, Justice, Education and National Security, as well as agencies and others involved in child care and protection. Mrs. Simpson Miller fielded questions from children on a range of issues and delivered a word of advice to parents. Love your children and let them know that you love them by telling them and showing them that you love them. Help them to build trust in you. Talk to them. Let them be confident that should anything happen to them, they can talk to mommy and daddy about it. As she chaired the Partnership for Jamaica National Council's last meeting for 2015, Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller welcomed the parliamentary opposition's return to the partnership table. Last Thursday's meeting saw Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith representing the opposition as the group discussed labor market reform. Health Minister Horace Daly also presented a brief to the council. And Governance Committee member Donna Parchment Brown was congratulated on her appointment as political ombudsman. The minister responsible for information was in Western Jamaica this past week. Senator Sandria Faulkner journeyed to Queensbury in St. Elizabeth last Thursday, where she issued $1.5 million in seeds, fertilizers and tanks to farmers affected by recent drought. This was my way of giving back to the community that I grew up in. I made representation to the Chinese embassy in Jamaica, and they were gracious enough to assist me in purchasing the tanks, the black tanks, as well as carrot seeds, onion seeds and fertilizer for the farmers who have had a very tough year. Back in Kingston, the Bureau of Gender Affairs hosted a discussion forum as it continued its three-month social media campaign to end gender-based violence. And that's it for Jamaica House Weekly. Join us again next time for the latest stories coming out of the office of the Prime Minister. Thirteen-year-old Brittany Bradbury is missing. She was last seen along Spanish Town Road in Kingston. Brittany is slim, has a dark complexion, and is about five feet two inches tall. At the time of her disappearance, she was wearing a dark blue blouse and blue skirt. While speaking with Ferry News, Brittany's mother, Simonia, had this message for her daughter. I want Brittany Bradbury to know that mommy loves her, and I want her to come home back to mommy and daddy. We are begging you, please, to come back home. We need you, we love you, we're not going to hurt you. We want to try and make things work for you. Fortunately for Simonia and her family, Brittany was found. She's among the nine out of 10 missing children who are reunited with their families each year. Now, we see these stories as they play out in the media and often wonder what has become of these missing children, not knowing the army of agencies that work over time to rescue them. The Office of the Children's Registry, OCR, is the agency responsible for coordinating the safe recovery of children who go missing. The OCR collects data on and refers cases of child abuse to the Child Development Agency and the Office of the Children's Advocate for Investigation and Action. In addition to training search and recovery personnel, the OCR has partnered with the Library Service to disseminate information on missing children. We have signed Memorandum of Understanding with the Ministry of Transport, Works and Housing in terms of collaboration with the, with the JUTC buses. But the most important tool in its arsenal is the Ananda Alert system. As soon as a parent 
cannot account for their child's whereabouts, then they are able to make a report to the police station or to the registry by calling 1-888-PROTECT. And an Ananda alert is then activated and a risk assessment done to determine if it is a case where it is very high risk or the risk is more minimal. At that point, if the report is received by the registry, within 30 minutes of receipt it is dispatched to the corporate communications unit and the missing person monitoring unit, and from there the interactions and investigation will begin. Once confirmed with the local station, an immediate release is done and this is sent out. The Jamaica Constabulary Force also has other branches that are active participants in the search and recovery efforts. They include the Corporate Communication Unit, the CCU, the National Intelligence Bureau, NIB, and the Center for the Investigation of Sexual Offenses and Child Abuse, Sissoka. The Police 119 Emergency Center plays a big role because what they do, they take this information and further disseminate it through the police network. So all police formations and divisions are made aware of this missing person. Once a child is recovered, the work of the team doesn't end. The next step in the process is restoration. Once a child is located, then we do a follow-up in counseling and social intervention from the child development agency. Um, if we do have issues with the Ministry of Education, um, specific schools, not wanting to take back that child because the child would have been out for a period of time. We do work together to see how we can get back that child to continue their education. The Child Development Agency plays an integral role in getting to the root cause of why the children go missing in the first place. It is going to be important that we hear what is happening and first of all is to address the situation that could have caused them want to think why they want to leave the home, why is it that they don't want to return and how is it that we can prevent such occurrence. Though the team working to return missing children to their homes or a place of safety have recorded several successes, their work is still unfinished. Amendments have been made to the Child Care and Protection Act. Harsher penalties have been prescribed for persons who murder, rape and commit other serious violent offences against children. And the child abuse cases will be fast-tracked in the court system. Work is also underway for legislation to be passed to create a new offence of parental neglect. When this comes into effect, a parent whose child is found in circumstances consistent with inadequate parental care and attention can be charged and tried for parental neglect. Even though missing children are still a stain on our country, Jamaica now leads the region in reports and bringing back children. And we've, report, and we've brought back nine out of every ten children who have gone missing. That achievement is strengthened with the implementation of a case management system which allows the OCR and the CDA to share information through a web-based system. The system also tracks children's development in the child care system from entry to exit. We have developed our first search and rescue protocol in which we have developed over 3,000 protocols for missing children. The dissemination has been going extremely well. We have disseminated to all our children's homes, all the schools that we have visited for school tours, and we're going to be continuing to distribute those 3,000 plus um, search and rescue protocol. The JCF has also been making moves in child care and protection with the introduction of the Stay Alert app. This sends alert to persons who are um, um, utilizing the Stay Alert. So you get an immediate alert that someone is missing, the area, all that information that you need along with the photograph. All of these initiatives, however, will bear no fruit if you and I don't get involved. If you know or suspect that a child is being abused, act. Call the police, call the OCR or message the JCF on its new app. The care and protection of our children is everybody's business. Nutritious food, succulent dishes, superior workmanship, and excellent service.
Jamaica is on the go. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's harness the indomitable spirit of our most valued resource, our people. Let's support our local businesses. After all, buying Jamaica means building Jamaica. Original. 2015 will officially end in a few weeks' time, and already some of us are reflecting on the year that was and making plans for 2016. If one of your plans involves laying claim to a piece of this rock, this next feature is for you. For some people, the dream of owning a home is just that, a dream. But for others, they are trying their best to turn it into a reality with a little help from the National Housing Trust NHD. Since the announcement of the eight lending policies by the Trust, it's been all systems go. The increase in loan limit coupled with the decrease in interest rate has certainly stimulated demand among some benefit types. The most significant is the open market facility wherein we are seeing a 53.6% increase in the number of persons who applied this year when compared to the same period last year. What's even better is that home prices are going down a little, so persons are even more inclined to owning a unit. As such, there has been a 14% increase in the number of applicants for build on own land and construction loans. Likewise, persons are even applying for additional funds on the open market that policy is reserved for those who did not borrow all of the money that they are entitled to from the NHT. So say for example the unit cost um, three million dollars and now our loan limit is 4.5 you would have access say three million dollars from us. You can within the, a five-year span apply for the difference of 1.5 million dollars and this amount can be used to um, repair the unit, it can be used to add on to the unit. The policies have been effective, so much so that NHT mortgages are applying for the deferred mortgage payment, the short-term lease program, and of course, the combined income. But there have been challenges. Some persons are having a difficulty paying for surveyor ID reports, evaluation reports, and the 5% deposit on the total cost of a house. That's for those units which require such deposit. But once the person comes in at the onset, from the thought gets in your head, I want to purchase a unit, and you come in and you get an eligibility done, you kind of have an idea of the price range that you need to be looking into, and you can begin saving. You can do so many things ahead of time so that when you are actually ready to do the purchase, then it, it is less overwhelming. The NHT does not only cater to the needs of aspiring homeowners, developers are also in the mix. They are being encouraged to take advantage of the developer's incentive program. It involves a special loan to developers at a 3% interest rate, given that they can construct a two-bedroom unit for $5.5 million or a studio for $3.3 million. Escalation and inflation costs will, however, be taken into consideration. We have begun a drive where we have met with quite a few developers thus far to explain and introduce the program to them. So we are hoping that they will be able to you know, jump on board and see how best they can access these funds and provide units at, at prices that our, our customers, our contributors can afford. So can the NHT afford all this? Certainly the organization is able to afford all of this. When, we, when the management team gets together to, to review the policy submissions that would come up, the viability of the trust is always an important consideration. Home ownership is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. It can be overwhelming, but the journey cannot be completed without that first step taken. If you have a piece of land, already just sitting there idle now is the time to come in and, and begin construction if you want to purchase or you want to build and don't have all the money now now is the time to think about buying the land so that as your financial situation increases or improves 
you can now start construction go there and look around there are deals now there are little fixer uppers where you may have to buy something and then remodel over the years in addition there are a number of developments out there going at good prices so now is the time to just go out there and seek what what is it you want and and come into the nht get your preliminary information and use that as a source to begin this journey you know towards home ownership Lottery scamming kills. It is a clear and present danger to all communities and our society at large. Up to August, 138 murders in Era 1 have been associated with lottery scamming. I want to make a personal appeal to parents and other family members to ensure that they do not, by their silence, give tacit support to their children who are involved in criminal behavior. Aside from the decoration, the songs, and maybe even the food, how do you know it's Christmas? The plants, of course. Take a look. The poinsettia originated in Mexico and is known by many as the Christmas flower. The poinsettia grows as tall as 10 to 15 feet high. The leaves are green for most of the year, but turn red near Christmas. This change in color occurs because the plant does not get as much sunlight at this time of the year. Poinsettias do not only bloom in the red hue, they can bloom in pink white and various shades of these colors depending on the temperature and biological hybrid. There is also a multicolored species known as marble. The poinsettia is a very popular gift at Christmas time. It is also used for decoration and can be seen in many homes and offices during the Yuletide season. I have forgotten much, but still I remember the poinsettia's red blood red in warm December. And that's how we close today's show. We value your feedback, so please continue to send your comments and queries to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm. If you're on social media, we're only a click and like away on Facebook and Twitter. We're always online at jis.gov.jm or through our mobile app that can be downloaded from the Google Play Store. On behalf of the entire team here at the GIS, I'm Theodore Henry. Thank you for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Thank you.